Hello guys and welcome to part 3 of making epic concept art in Blender. If you haven't already seen part 1 and 2 make sure to check them out. Now this is where we're going to be rendering out some of our renders and we're going to be taking them into Adobe Photoshop where we're going to do some really basic quick and dirty things just to add a bit of detail. Once again none of this is supposed to be absolutely realistic it's just about getting some pretty cool um, concept your results relatively quickly so um let's get into it and once again the files are available on my patreon if you guys want to check that out okay so now that we're in part three we're going to start rendering out a few things and we're going to take our renders into photoshop so let's go back to our render settings over here at the properties for the render now keep in mind that in the earlier parts we did dabble a little bit of some of these settings but what we're going to do obviously if you haven't already done it make sure you are in cycles and um, also if you have a GPU, definitely enable that. Um, and under the render settings here, we want to go to the, um, the max sample right here. And uh, 4096 is quite high. So we're just going to go with 120. That'll be more than enough, especially when we have the denoiser enabled. And um, yeah, that's about it. You can also, before you do any sort of rendering, um, go to your world settings again. And remember, we added a sky texture. If you want to use a HDRI, go ahead. Um, I'm just using the built-in sky texture. It works fine for this. You can go into the rendered mode. And um, one of the things you could really mess around with is your sun rotation. Um, now, keep in mind that um, the background you're going to add in into here, like the image in Photoshop, um, you might want to think about what that image is going to be if you found one and then kind of match the lighting direction to that. In this case, I'm more interested in just the artistic license here. So I'm not going to be too worried about the physicality of it. Does it actually make sense? Like um, I might have the lighting coming a little bit from the side here, but I might have an image to back where the sun is directly. And it doesn't make physical sense, but it looks good. So um, in that case, that's more than good enough for me. Okay, now that we're done with that, one thing I just noticed here, the tank is facing the wrong way. Now you could make it look like it's going away. So this is actually the front here. Um, so if you wanted to, you could make it kind of face the um, dyno over here like that by rotating it around. Um, that's really up to you what story you want to tell. Um, maybe I'll rotate it something like that. It really doesn't matter. You can, uh, you can play around with whatever you want. Maybe even something like that looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, once you have something you're confident with, um, just go to render and then go render image and let it render. Okay, that's the first render complete. You're going to go to image and then go save as image and you can select anywhere in your computer. I'm going to just go to my desktop. I'm going to call this um, um, frame one and I'm just going to go save as image. But before you do that, also just make sure it's RGBA because we want that alpha channel, the transparency. And you can go to the color depth and also just make that 16 and then go save as image. And then you can just close that render box. And what we're going to do is now turn off the other collections, everything except the plants. And the reason we're doing that, we're doing a separate render for the plants, is because we're going to be projecting a dirt texture over our ground. And uh, then we'd have to, you know, kind of paint that away where the trees are, so or the shrubs. So having that as an extra rendered out layer is really handy. So we're going to go render, render image, and just render the plants out as their own layer. And then once that's done rendering, you can go to image, save as image, and just call that um, bushes and save it in the same place where you saved the previous frame and then go save as. Make sure also that has that alpha and um, let's close that. And uh, that should be about it for now. Let's get into Photoshop. So I okay, so now we've done those two renders in Blender. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the internet and just get two images. So the one is this one here, which we're going to use for background. And these are just free downloads on Pexel. So I'll put a link in the description below. And then there's another one, which is this one here. Um, you can use any kind of similar images that you want um, like here's one you could use that's quite nice in fact i might actually use this one here that looks pretty cool so um, just get something that you could use to project over the ground so then you can also go free download so i'm going to download this one and just this one maybe for the sky i'm going to download that one as well and once you have those downloaded you can just drag them to your desktop or wherever you've kept the other frames that we've uh, rendered out and then you can just open up Adobe Photoshop. Now, once again, Adobe Photoshop, you can get it for free for seven days if you want to try it out. Or you could just use something like GIMP as a free alternative. We can do a lot of the similar things. So once you have Photoshop opened up, all you're going to do is take that initial render, so the frame one, whatever you decided to call it, and just drag it right into Photoshop. And it'll automatically add it in there and set up you know, the layers here for you. 
You're also gonna just take the background, whichever image you've downloaded and decided to use for a background, you can take that one in next and drag it in. And you're gonna see when you drag something into Photoshop, it gives you these transform options by default. If you can't see them or you've lost them, so for example, um, you know, I just click somewhere. All you have to do is select the image on the layer that you wanna transform and just go Control T or Command T. It gives you these transforms. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab one of these handles on either side and just scale it up a little bit and maybe bring it down quite a bit like so. And then just take that layer and drag it underneath that layer one. In fact, let's just double click on that layer one, which is our render, just call it um, render. And let's just double click on this one and call it BG for background. Okay, so we've got a background placed in here. At the moment, the saturations and things and the colors, they don't really match, but we're gonna solve that in a little bit. All we need to do now is take whatever image we're gonna project over our dirt here. So that's gonna be this one here. Once again, in the link, link in the description below. So you're gonna drag that image in to Photoshop. And this one, make sure it is at the very top. And you can take it with the grab tool here, just grab it and drag it to the middle. Control T or Command T to get the transforms. And then just scale this one up as well. Move it up a little bit and just roughly get it over the render here. And you can right click and go place. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to the um, mode and at the moment it's normal. Let's make that overlay. Okay, now it's overlaying on the background and everything. But what you can do is you can go Alt and then just left click in the middle. See that little black arrow coming up? If you do that, it's gonna clip to just the layer, the um, layer underneath it. Okay, so now it's got a clipping. And what you can do, it's on the dinosaur and the tank, which is no good. So what you can do is just go over to the eraser tool and then click on that layer at the top. It's gonna give you this little warning, just go okay. And now you can just take your eraser, make sure the opacity is 100%. And also under your brush options, make sure the hardness is at a full 100% and just paint away where the dinosaur is, but don't go onto the ground here. And then also just come in here and paint away on the tank. You can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to affect the size of the brush. So I'm just painting these away here. And you can see it's kind of over these um, shrubs here as well, which is not really what we want, but that's why we rendered out that separate um, bushes layer. So I'm just gonna paint away where the feet are. What you can do is gradually turn down the opacity as you start getting to something like the feet. So maybe take the opacity down to about 30% and then just paint it away where the dinosaur's feet are. And uh, take your time with this. I'm just doing this real quick and dirty, but just painting it away where we don't want it to be overlaid. Like so, okay, that's pretty cool. And you know, you can do a better job with the tank. But now what, what we're gonna do, because that is projected over our bushes here, we're gonna take that separate bushes render that we did and just drag it into Photoshop as well. And just make sure to grab it and line that up. There we go. And you can now right click, go place. And with this one, we can just come here to the opacity and just drag it down just a little bit. Now over here, you can see we have a bit of an issue because that rendered where the tank would have been. So see if I turn that on and off. If you have an issue like that, just simply get your eraser tool and if that bushes layer, feel free to erase anything that shouldn't be there if you have that issue at all. So I'm gonna quickly do that. And yeah, it's um, quick and dirty. If you zoom in and you look up close, you can see it breaks down a little bit and there's some issues. But if you kind of zoom out, you know, you don't really notice those issues that much. So let's just quickly grab that um, image we dragged in that's being projected over on the ground. Right, and what you can do with this one, you can actually try some of the different modes, like for example, multiply might look cool. Let's just go with overlay, and let's just take that opacity and just drag it down just a little bit. And also what you can do is you can select that layer and you can go to image adjustments. You can go to hue and saturation. You can also mess around with the hue a little bit um, and also the saturation level and also the lightness, right? So maybe bring it down just a bit and bring that saturation down just a bit. And that looks okay, but the background really doesn't match that well at the moment. You can try and get a different background or what you can do. In fact, with my background, I'm just gonna select it and go Control T to bring up the transforms. I'm just gonna scale the background even a little bit more and bring it down kind of like that. Um, just trying it out. See what that looks like. Okay, that looks better. I'm gonna right click and just go place. 
And with the background, you can go to image adjustments. You can go to your curves. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go to the red channel. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to drag it up just a little bit to add a little bit more redness to the sky, to make it feel a little bit more deserty. I'm also just going to go to the blue and I'm just going to come down here and just drag that down just a little bit on the curve. And then I'm just going to go to the RGB and I'm just going to bring it up over here to top a little bit and then down here just to add a little bit of an S curve. Um, that just looks kind of cool. And then I'm going to go OK. And now that looks cool. Um, another thing you can do, the background looks a little bit too sharp. So you can just go filter. You can go to blur and then go Gaussian blur and just give it a slight amount of blur, just a little bit. So just slightly out of focus and then go OK. And so far we have a pretty cool looking composite here. Um, you can actually grab the, re the render layer as well. You can go to image adjustments, go to curves. And with the RGB, let's just give that a slight S curve just to give it a little bit more contrast, um, but try not to overdo it there as well. And we're going to go to the reds and maybe just bring the reds down just a little bit. I feel like this is a little bit too red in there and then go OK. And um, another thing you can do, which isn't really proper motion blur, but if you actually select your render layer, you can go over here to this tool, which is the blur tool, click on it. And with your brush here, you can actually just come and just kind of lightly blur things that look like they should be moving. For example, like the legs. So I'm just adding a little bit of blur here to kind of make it look like when this photo was taken, there was a little bit of um, movement happening here. So I'm just slightly blurring the things like the tail and the legs here. And uh, just ever so slightly, just a little bit like that. Okay, so that looks cool. And I'm also going to come here to the tank, do a very similar kind of thing here. Just a little bit of blur towards the edges, just give it a bit of what almost looks like movement or motion blur there. Even though it's very subtle, it does um, kind of add a little bit more realism to it. I feel like the background might just be a little bit too saturated. So I'm just going to go down, select the background, and I'm just going to go to the hue and saturation. Just bring down that saturation ever so slightly. Maybe bring the lightness up a bit. Kind of make it look almost a little bit more atmospheric, like it's a little bit of a haze almost. Okay, that looks better. Okay, and now one of the last things we can do, and if you wanted to, you can definitely go add in some more details like, like dust plumes or something. But you can go to the very top layer, select it, and then just click plus to create a layer at the top. And uh, we don't have to name that anything, but let's just go over to our brushes. And let's just make it black. And we're just going to paint black on the outside like so. Going all the way around. Then you're going to go to filter and then blur, Gaussian blur, and then give that a nice strong blur. Click OK. And then with that layer, you can come down and make it a multiply. And then just grab the opacity and bring it down a little bit. That gives us a bit of a vignette over the um, composition here. So that is how I've done that. And you can spend as much time as you want working on this, making it look cooler. Um, I'm going to show you a few examples in a second of the exact same thing I've done here, but how I did it a little bit differently. And here you can see a secondary example where it's the exact same composite we've just been working on, but I've just put it in a bit of a different background here. So once again, this is also an image I found on Pexels. So just to show you how you can make it look quite different just by putting in different backgrounds. And uh, just one more additional cool thing I want to show you that I think you guys will really like. Um, just so quickly go and then um, just say, for example, render out your image. So let's go and export. So export, export um, as quick PNG. And I'm just going to quickly export this to my desktop and just call it um, Dino Tester. And just go save. And then just drag that rendered out image back into Photoshop. And I'm just going to place that at the very top. So one really cool thing you can do in Photoshop is you can take your image, you can go to filter and then go to the filter gallery. And inside of Photoshop's filter gallery, you're gonna have all of these cool different options here that you can kind of make it look a little bit stylized or almost a little bit painterly. So um, under the brush strokes, you can try ones like angled strokes. 
that looks pretty cool. Um, cross stitch. Um, you can try all different ones and then mess around with the strengths of them and kind of give it a little bit of a stylized um, look, a little bit almost painterly. This is something I enjoy to do sometimes with some of the um, renders that I've done in Blender once I've composited them and it just gives a little bit of something extra, a little bit of a stylized feel. Then once you know you find one that you like, you can just go OK. And now that has a little bit of a painterly look as well, which is kind of cool. So um, there's a lot of ways you can stylize your final compositions, make them look um, really cool. But that's it. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much more. Um, you know, these are just a few of the projects we've been working on in this little uh, tutorial series. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it and try out different things. Like I said, this wasn't really for beginners. There's more people who already understand Blender a little bit and know a thing or two about um, compositing layers in Photoshop or GIMP. But see what you guys can make using this kind of free asset technique and have a ton of fun. And thank you for watching.